So during this session now, we will have the opportunity to reflect on the Oslo Conference on Protecting Children in Armed Conflict, which took place just last week on the 5th or 6th of June in Oslo. The conference, which was called Protecting Children in Armed Conflict, Our Common Future, was co-hosted by the Norwegian government, Save the Children, UNICEF, and the ICRC in partnership with the African Union, OCHA, and the Office of the Special Representative of the Secretary General for Children and Armed Conflict. It was an incredible international effort to increase awareness and understanding among decision makers on the protection challenges that children face in uh, situations of armed conflict and to mobilize commitments, political commitments, humanitarian commitments, and financial commitments moving forward. Today, literally just one week after the conference, we are privileged to be joined by some of the key stakeholders from the host entities, the Norwegian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Save the Children, UNICEF and ICRC to share with us here their reflections and also how we can build upon the momentum as a community moving forward. So with no further ado, we are pleased to welcome Kathleen Anderson, Special Representative for the Protection of Civilians from the Norwegian Ministry of Foreign Affairs to open this session. So over to you, Katrina. Thank you very much, and thank you for that uh, kind introduction about the conference. So we are one week after the conference, still um, very much full of impressions from the conference and, uh, and thinking uh, creatively about uh, the follow-up. So let me just say a couple of words about um, what was the Oslo Conference. Uh, for Norway, um, protection of children in armed conflict and in humanitarian action uh, became a priority in our humanitarian strategy launched in 2019. Uh, subsequently, it was also our priority as, a, as an elected member in the Security Council. And, uh, we have had a discussion with Save the Children Norway for a while about doing something together uh, with the child protection community to strengthen the protection of children in our conflict. So coming out of the uh, uh, in the Security Council, we decided to reach out to UNICEF, to ICRC, and to Save the Children uh, to make this collective effort to sort of address the complexity that you have been discussing uh, through this uh, afternoon um, and the, the breadth of issues that relates to child protection. And I think we tried to look at other conferences, but I think this, is, uh, this conference became unique in the fact that it, it didn't pick one topic, it didn't pick one uh, sector within child protection, it sort of just looked at trying to mobilize political uh, engagement across sectors across the globe for the needs and the urgent need to, to strengthen child protection uh, in armed conflict. Um, so lots of hard work, lots of consultation with children uh, went before the conference. Um, and when we came to Oslo, we gathered more than 450 participants from across the globe and across the sectors. The conference was built around four plenaries and six parallel sessions, where the plenaries, where you can have, where you have the plenaries having a quite broad approach uh, to prevention, funding, and so on, uh, quality programming, uh, programming, the links to peace and security, while the parallel sessions really could dig into some of the details and the operational challenges of war in cities, of preventing recruitment and securing uh, adequate integration and so on. The, the conference was over two days. It had 120 speakers that ranged from, I think our youngest speaker was a speaker from uh, from Bosnia, who is uh, uh, working on uh, the issues uh, uh, and challenges faced by children born of war. And we had ministers from several states uh, um, speaking. Uh, and I think 
what was a little bit different for us in this conference uh, when you compare it to some other conferences is that there was strong representation from states affected by conflict. They really came out for the conference. They came and discussed their issues very openly. Uh, and they stuck with NGOs, they stuck with the international organizations. And I think maybe that is for me the most important takeaway from this conference, that that dialogue was actually very welcomed and it was possible to have. It was a very frank discussion, I must say, with 450 people uh, in the group. Um, we invited all stakeholders to make commitments. And we have a wide range of possible commitments suggested and also invited, um, invited the stakeholders to make their own individual commitments. And I think we had um, uh, about 80 states present at the conference. And we know that some are still working on their commitments. So I think another important takeaway from the meeting for us was to say that 6th of June, it's not the closure of anything, it's just a continuation to move on and, and keep engaging and advocating for, for strong commitments. Um, one of the key elements I think was this partnership between a state, Norway, civil society organizations. The Alliance played a huge supporting part as well through Save the Children and UNICEF and with UNICEF as, as a partner and with ICRC. I will not claim that it's easy for these very different um, partners to come together with their own thinking and their own systems and come together and, and make something together. But when it works, it's fantastic. And I think it did. Uh, for us in this uh, in this uh, conference, so really appreciate it of all of the alliance members that came to the conference, to UNICEF, ICRC, and Save the Children for really getting not only uh, the logistics and the, the substance and all this, but getting the right people to speak at the conference, uh, to to find those people that have the experience that have the the operational views and the, and the and have a stake in this uh, I think this is so the consultation with children uh, was really uh, systematic and done through the alliance with save the children and I thought that was also a, an important uh, part of the conference if I can say something that I thought was the weakness of the conference, is that while uh, many states came, and particularly I think uh, states who themselves are affected by conflict in one way or the other, they came out, they really participated and, and brought commitments to the conference. Um, donors are still slow in, uh, in, uh, in uh, pledging. So to me, again, it's a start uh, of this engagement and mobilize broader outside the sector it well beyond you guys you know you are already here you're already doing the work you're already changing uh, changing the operations the the way you are doing things professionalizing putting children at the center but what this conference was meant to say is look we cannot do it all by ourselves. We need others to step up. We need the whole system to take responsibility for this. We need state to take responsibility. We need the rest of the UN to take responsibility. And uh, I think we came a long way in that. And that's really where I think the follow-up follow up is as well. Uh, to keep that engagement coming and that hopefully in when we look at the plans and budgets for 2024, Hopefully, they will look a little bit different and that this change will happen over time. So, I'll stop there and uh, welcome any questions, comments, input um, for those of you who were there, but also for those of you who, who were not there but are hoping to get some of the results to benefit your, your programs. Thank you. Thank you so much. Katharina, thank you so much for that overview of uh, what was really a very unique conference. 
especially the engagement, as you mentioned, of such a wide variety of stakeholders from across governments, including those from countries affected by conflict, civil society and beyond. And also thank you for the reflection as well on donors and to really make sure that as we think moving forward, how we can really strengthen or our advocacy with donors so they really do commit. So we do start to see concrete commitments. So thank you so much. For those who are maybe there or have reflections, please do um, put your comments in the, in the chat box. And we don't have time for an extensive question and answer round now, but if you do have questions, we will take a note of these. So please do keep those in the, in the uh, put those in the chat box. Before we move um, on to our... Oh, I think I was muted. So before we move on to um, before we move on to the panel, we would like to do a short interactive exercise with you all here, and we would like to ask you what do you see as the biggest issues facing children in conflict. Um, so please find the link to the Mentimeter in the chat box, uh, available in four languages. And please do um, start to input your answers. I think this will be really helpful for us also as we start to um, to hear, to think about how we can build on this momentum going forward. We're starting to get a few answers here. Lack of investment in child protection systems. Children being neglected during conflict. Lack of prioritization by the wider humanitarian system weakening of the protective environment so yes i can see a lot of um, a lot of links here with what what do we see as the biggest issues facing children in conflict and also our reflections in the first session around the centrality of children and their protection um okay please keep these coming these are really helpful for us you can scroll down a lot of link to other sectors as well we're looking at access to livelihood Children's voices not being heard. So a lot of links here to uh, accountability, participation. Okay, stronger advocacy with government. Fantastic. Thank you so much. So please keep, please keep these coming. Um, and now we'll move on to this next segment of this session. And I will hand over to Hani Mansourian, who will be leading our panel discussion. Thank you, Hani. Great. Thank you very much, Elspeth. Thanks, Catherine, for, for opening the session for us um, and for all the work that you did, Catherine, in, uh, in making this happen uh, and your remarkable facilitation skills. Um, so I have the honor of having three panelists uh, with me today. I have Steve Miller, who is the Child Protection Global Director for, Char for Save the Children. Um, it's very late for, for Steve, where he is, so we appreciate you being here, Steve. Tasha Gill, who uh, those who were in the previous session already met, Acting Director of Child Protection, UNICEF in headquarters. Um, thanks for being here. And Alex Jackson, the Global Advisor on Child Protection with the ICRC. Thanks, Alex, for being with us. Um, I would like to basically ask all three of you, um, and I'll start with Tasha to uh, reflect with us um, and in kind of telling us a little bit about what stood out to you at the event, including any specific highlights from the sessions that you participate, because I know there are multiple sessions at, at times, parallel sessions happening at the same time. So you might not have been in every session, but in the sessions you were, what stood out to you, Tasha, over to you. Thanks so much, Hani, and thanks to everyone for um, this session, I wanted to begin my remarks by appreciating the extraordinary collaboration and certainly Katrin said that that collaboration across multiple stakeholders is not easy, but she made it very easy. Um, it was truly a labor of love to deliver this conference together with the government of Norway, with ICRC and with Save the Children. And I think it's because we all share those common goals of improving protection for children around conflict. Um, so three things that stood out to me, um, kind of takeaways during and after the conference. The first one, Katrina already highlighted, and that is who showed up. We were so impressed to have 150% <laughs> uh, 
of the participants we expected. There were more people than we had anticipated. It showed um, in uh, no uncertain terms how important this issue is. Um, and as um, was highlighted also how multi-stakeholder this is, the essential nature of having um, governments, civil society of all types, international, national, local, um, UN, international organizations, um, organizations committed to peace and security, organizations committed to humanitarian action, a wide variety of actors involved. Um, and was also highlighted the number of governments who came, 80 governments um, surpasses um, many other previous initiatives to address this issue. So delighted to see that um, many governments from across continents, many from the African continent, but also that cross-regional aspect was fantastic. Um, I heard in the corridors about governments from different regions making connections and learning from one another um, that, again, underlined the value of having this type of forum um, that brings so many different actors together. The second one is about the types of commitments that were made um, and especially want to highlight the political commitments that were made by governments. Um, a couple that stand out in my memory um, are from South Sudan and Mozambique. South Sudan made significant commitments to the Paris principles, to Vancouver principles, to specific operational um, commitments to address end and prevent sexual violence by armed forces all absolutely critical as um, we continue to address the issues of children affected by armed conflict in South Sudan. Mozambique is making strides on a handover protocol um, so that when children are um, encountered in the field of military operations, they are handed over directly to child protection services. These are concrete political and operational commitments that we were hoping to see come forward. And these are examples from those governments that came at the highest level. Their foreign ministers spoke to these commitments um, and very encouraging. There were many, many more, but they um, are the ones that I thought to highlight here in this forum. In terms of specific sessions, um, as Katrin said, a wide variety of deep dives that were of critical importance. Perhaps I'll highlight the issue um, in the parallel session on engaging armed actors of how critically important that engagement is as a prevention tool to prevent uh, grave child rights violations and other protection problems and how critical it is that we all have um, roles and responsibilities in that engagement in order to be able to deliver on protection. And then the last one, and I think some of my um, fellow panelists will speak to this, was the centrality of children throughout. And it really is integrated. Um, I, I, I fear that I, I might belittle the point by saying that it moved from lip service to something that's actually quite um, significant and concrete. But I felt that throughout the um, articulation by all types of stakeholders and through the ways in which children represented and were um, engaged in the conference, which I hope Steve will speak to, really spoke to the centrality of children in this conference and in the work, the day-to-day -day work before, during, and after this conference. Um, so I thought that was of critical importance as well. Those are three highlights. Um, so thanks very much. Great. Thank you very much, Tasha. Um, yes, I mean, just I also noticed how how central centrality of children was in a lot of the discussions, uh, and it was really heartening uh, to see that. But also this this element of the mul multitude of stakeholders that that actually came together was was very noticeable and 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 very encouraging um, to see how. And it's it was very interesting for me that a lot of these stakeholders were speaking from different directions, but all pointing to the whole element of, of protecting children. Um, so so it, was, uh, it was a very interesting uh, amalgamation of, of, of approaches. Steve, I'll, I wanna ask the same question to you. So what stood out to you in the sessions that you participated in? Yeah, thanks, honey. And, th and thanks, Tasha, for those reflections as well. I'm in uh, uh, Seoul in South Korea today, and we, we're here for the, the annual Save the Children members meeting, and it brings together our board and CEOs, global, regional, country. Everyone is here in Korea, 
and and we're here, those of us who went to Oslo last week, and as you know, Cornelius said in the last session, we're convincing our senior leaders. You know, those of us who were, who were there in Oslo, we're creating a buzz about the conference, the centrality of children and their protection in humanitarian action, and it's authentic. I'll, I'll, I'll share a few things I saw in Oslo to add to what Tasha has just said. Firstly, I love it that prevention was given a bit of a spotlight in the context of reducing needs. Several participants spoke about strengthening child protection systems ahead of conflicts breaking out and the importance of capacity strengthening, particularly of local and national actors. And I also saw locally led action coming out loudly, certainly in the parallel session that Save the Children organized on child protection financing. We had such an interesting panel, local, regional, global practitioners, a donor, all just incredibly impressive individuals with a lot to say and a clear message and challenge for us to all be working harder to shift power for INGOs to play a better complementary role and for donors and UN agencies to reconsider their appetite for risk. And some of the panelists in that particular session showcased their in-country work, their life-saving child protection work, and there was a strong recognition that we have the legal and normative frameworks, we know the solutions, but we need to see increased prioritization and funding to ensure implementation. And finally, on, on the accountability to children peace, yes, indeed, as you said, honey, uh, the conference had a, had a children's call to action following consultations of over 300 children in 10 countries prior to the conference. The organizers made a good attempt to ensure that children's voices were present throughout, if not the children themselves. Each session starting with powerful videos of demands and perspectives of children. And of course, it's our job now to ensure that children get feedback from this conference too on an engaged on an ongoing basis. Thanks, honey. Back to you. Amazing. Thanks for those reflections, Steve. Um, yes, that the, the videos I think that were that were uh, shown at the beginning of very short videos, but very powerful messages really kind of set the tone. Uh, and it kept reminding the participants of uh, of who's as uh, I think Bill mentioned, whose reality really counts. Um, so that was really well done, and 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 thanks, Steve, for pointing out. I actually happened to participate in this session that you mentioned on financing, that you um, you masterfully facilitated, and it, the 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 element of locally led action was really coming strongly. Interestingly, not just from local organizations, but also from donors and and those that operate at the global level. So thanks for, for pointing those out. Uh, Alex, um, over to you for some of your reflections on what stood out. Well, thank you very much. Um, and I would like to echo, I think, Tasha, in the importance of this conference. It was certainly one of the first we've had like this in probably over a decade. And really bringing all of those people into one space is quite a feat, and we really do have no way to thank for that. So it's extremely challenging, actually, to get an initiative like this off the ground. I also do think that the parallel sessions, so there were three on day one and there were three on day two. And this allowed, for those of you that weren't there, this really allowed participants to go and dig into an issue um, of their interest. And many of those issues have just come up on the Mentimeter. So there was child recruitment and reintegration. There was family separation. There was financing engaging with armed actors, and then the ICRC ran one on war in cities, which I'll come back to. I think my second takeaway was really the that throughout the importance of the legal and policy frameworks kept coming up. It was really when we think about what are the protections for children in armed conflict, we're going back to international humanitarian law, we're going back to human rights law, and making sure that states have endorsed those and are implementing those even before conflict breaks out. So we're talking about things like the Rome Statute, OPAC, Paris Principles, Vancouver Principles, Safe Schools Declarations. These were really a recurring theme throughout, throughout the conference. And I think that's very important because it's only through holding states 
to and other actors to account that we are going to get some meaningful change for children in armed conflict. It creates this protective environment that we that we all want to be working in. And then finally, on the War in Cities panel, we brought together um, a representative of the Philippines Armed Forces, the country director for Sudan from Norwegian People's Aid, and someone from the president of the Iraqi Red Crescent Society. And in terms of localization, we really had good representation of the Red Cross and Red Crescent and national societies throughout the conference. And we were also able to profile the ICRC's new report, which if you haven't seen it, it's called Childhood in Rubble, um, the humanitarian consequences of urban warfare for children. And really looking, just as this conference did, really looking at the range of harms that can happen to children, and then talking and then providing basic recommendations for the actors that do have the power to prevent or to alleviate suffering for children. So it was a it was a powerful discussion, and I think fitted in well into the the broader discussions in this conflict about the many different ways that different actors um, can take steps to move the protection of children forward. Back to you, Hani. Great, thank you very much, Alex. Um, uh, thanks for mentioning the the importance of the policy and and legal frameworks, because that I feel like there there was a really interesting um covering of multiple layers of of actors and action that needs to take place for us to be able to prevent violations all the way from preventing vi um, conflict to begin with but all and then down to kind of holding to account those that that are violating the rights of children so and and in this in this forum we have a lot of practitioners so we're doing the the work that often comes when conflict is already underway some of the violations are already taking place, but then this conference in Oslo really brought those that can make a difference at the at the policy and legal level level as well. And Tasha mentioned some of the commitments. Alex, I want to stay with you and um, ask you to, if you're looking ahead, uh, thinking about what needs to come after, because it's, as Catherine mentioned, the 6th of uh, June was just the beginning of another phase of this work that we are going to do. So what recommendations do you have for the next steps and what role both the child protection community, um, which includes the, the Alliance, but also as all of us as individuals can play in maintaining the momentum that the Oslo conference uh, created? Thank you, Hani. Um, I think we can each maintain momentum in the different spaces in which we work. I think there are big international opportunities coming up. I know at the end of the year, there's the Global Refugee Forum. I think there's there at some point will be the Safe Schools Conference. But then we also individually have our different ways to engage with different actors. And I think this can by, be bilateral or in these kind of big fora. So it's really to make sure that in all of the discussions that our organizations are having with states, but also with each other, that we build on what came out of the conference. And there was good representation, including by regional bodies. So the African Union, the European Union, the League of Arab States, and really to talk to them because endorsement is one thing, but really this, what is the meaningful piece is around the implementation. So I think those are ways that we can that we can move forward um, as a group and as the alliance. And then just before I, I pass back, I do think that we have an opportunity in the alliance through the technical working groups and the task forces. I think that we are able to bring together expertise from a range of organization and to produce this guidance and strong messaging. And if we're thinking about children in armed conflict, there are things that are recurrent and we're really, we can really offer to states when things escalate, when there are new areas where conflict takes place, we can really offer this expertise, not only to the states, but also to others in the humanitarian sector and say, think about it doing, doing it this way. This is the guidance on this. I mean, one thing that we hear consistently, for example, is messaging around the non-adoption of children, the minute a crisis breaks out, including in armed conflict. And these are messages that 
with all of the voices that make up the alliance, I think we can continually put on the table until they become the accepted norms. So for me, there are many ways we can take this forward individually as organizations, but also as the collective. But I'll be interested in hearing from the others as well. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Alex. And, and hear your, your call loud and clear, and we will play our part in continually repeating the same messages, the lessons that we have learned in the previous, uh, in previous uh, crises. Um, Steve, same. What are your recommendations yep. keeping the momentum? Yeah, great. That that was excellent, Alex. Thank you. You, you know, we're, we're on a journey to placing children and their protection at the center of humanitarian action, central to all actors. And Oslo was perhaps one small step along that road. The success of this conference, as Alex alluded to, and others like it, is is how things look in two to three years' time. It's not in the moment. You you don't judge it now. It's later. We need some kind of mechanism to track these commitments and to follow up. And I understand uh, what Catherine was saying earlier, some creative thinking is going into to, in, in this direction. And we need to maintain these conversations at the highest level to ensure we keep this momentum. There's an inherent value of having these decision makers all in one room together, Tasha spoke eloquently about earlier. At Save the Children, we have made our own commitments in Oslo, which we very much intend to implement. And my colleague Amanda will be touching on that shortly. And it's up to each of us to keep this at the top of the agenda in our respective organizations. And that's what I'm doing this week in South Korea. Back to you, Ani. Fantastic. Thank you, Steve. So yes, we all have also individual um, role to play in making sure that that momentum doesn't die away and 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 we see the results in hopefully a few years uh, tasha uh we end with you on your recommendations thanks so much and perhaps i'll um start where steve ended on our own commitments and to confirm that unicef also has made commitments around the programs the people and the policy that will help strengthen protection for children in armed conflict situations um, and having those commitments on the global platform are useful for us as well as an institution to ensure their implementation, their follow through and reporting back to the world on our commitments. Um, and I guess that leads me then to the two points that I wanted to make about the way forward for the Alliance and for us as a community to ensure that we reap the most we can from this conference looking ahead and the changes we want to see across um, the system in the years to come. So first of all, um, in appreciating Norway's leadership, um, let's look for some more leaders to join Norway, more champions. Um, Alex was um, recollecting when was the last time we had a similar conference. My mind goes back to 2000 in Winnipeg in Canada. Um, indeed, there were the Paris conferences on the specific issue of child soldiers, but in terms of a broad remit to address all of the forms of protecting children in armed conflict. Um, and that is a good long time. So let us look for jointly more champions across the world um, to take forward this work and to join Norway in their leadership um, on bringing the attention, the political, operational, financial commitments to strengthening protection of children in armed conflict situations. And then in terms of that implementation, how do we ensure um, the day-to-day, -day, um, and that is alongside children and their communities, um, that is alongside parliaments and government, that's along alongside um, defense forces and armed groups and ensuring protection. Um, and one thing that I've been reflecting on with others coming out of the conference is that roadmap um, and looking at a compact for impact. How do we ensure the impact? So track the implementation and report back to the world on the implementation um, on a periodic basis. Um, hold ourselves to account um, and to ensure that we harness the, the momentum and the mobilization um, over the years to come. Um, armed conflicts are continuing and I fear growing. Um, and so we cannot let up from that type of um, persistent, intentional um, focus on protecting children and ensuring that the world is aware of what this means for children 
and the changes that we will see across systems, our own institutions, and the infrastructure more broadly to protect children, um, community level, um, global level. So those are those are the key um, points I have for going ahead. More champions to join Norway and others, and ensuring a compact for impact, a roadmap for implementation and tracking implementation. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, Tasha. Um, and also, you mentioned having children, governments, um, and armed forces uh, kind of with us in this process, which I thought was very, very important um, note to to take with us out of out of this conversation. I really thank all three of you for for being with us. Um, Steve and Tasha both spoke about commitments that their organizations have made. The alliance has also made specific. Uh, uh, commitments that my colleague Amanda Bryden, who is the co-lead of our advocacy working group, is going to speak to, and we also in, have all intentions to to really working towards those uh, with all of you guys. So thanks, Steve, Tasha, and Alex for being with us, and we'll, we'll all hand over to Amanda. Thank you, Hani, and thanks to our speakers. So in, in terms of next steps, I mean, more broadly, we're going to see the chair summary that was mentioned from our hosts at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Oslo that will capture the commitments and um, ways that are being explored to track implementation. But in terms of those of us who are here today, I mean, what's really stood out in this session for me and in the conference itself is that we all have a key role for the child protection sector to play in elevating the importance of child protection and humanitarian action and seeing this momentum continue forward. As Hani mentioned, within the Alliance, we have a number of um, commitments that were made uh, at Oslo for the Alliance to take forward, which I wanted to touch on. Three broad pillars of that. The first is on capacity and knowledge sharing. So we've made commitments on strengthening the knowledge and skills on child protection and other sectorial practitioners um, over the next years on CAFAG, on the child protection minimum standards, as well as on designing and implementing child-friendly and child-led accountability mechanisms. So all crucial parts of what the Alliance does and building and strengthening that capacity. The second pillar of our commitments is on advocacy. So that's about ensuring that children and their protection will be central in forums for humanitarian action. So that includes uh, the IASC centrality of protection policy and its implementation, which is being taken forward as we speak. And then the last pillar of the Alliance commitments is looking at evidence building. So particularly on building evidence on the cost efficiency for child protection programming, as well as building ethical good practice for research methods and being able to package that up and be sharing those learnings across the child protection network and sector for us all to build into the work that we do on a day to day. I think for me, working closely with networks um, to engage states on commitments at the national level is also going to be key to keeping up that momentum as part of our next steps, ensuring that these words become a reality for children affected by conflict. So connecting that global conversation to the local, to the amazing work that all of you are doing on a day to day basis with children to deliver uh, programs and services for protecting children in conflict. Um, those of us at the global level uh, can be working to amplify, complement, reinforce, find these donor champions or find these child protection champions, including donors, to take this work, work forward. I think this protecting children in conflict requires the spotlight um, and a prioritization and collective effort for this all. So I'm super, was at Oslo and super excited to be taking forward this work with many of you. And I'll hand back to our facilitator, Elspeth, for a final word. Thank you so much, uh, Amanda. So the Alliance uh, commitments will be shortly on our websites and we will make sure that these are shared with you all. Um, it also including through the working group groups and task force which collectively will be contribute, contributing towards their implementation. So thank you to all of those who input into these as well. 
Um, so with that, I would just like to thank our speakers to Katrina, to Tasha, to Alexandra, to Steve, to Amanda for joining us today, especially so soon after the conference and sharing your valuable reflections and insights, especially around how we can contribute to keeping the momentum going forward in the different spaces and the different places in which we work. So we mentioned as, it, as, it, as individuals, as organizations, and collectively as the Alliance, as we contribute to and support the roadmap, the compact for impact moving forward. So thank you so much. And I will now hand over to my colleagues leading our next session to commemorate the World's Day Against Child Labor. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.